Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about Logan Paul. That's a bit odd, I guess. I'm not generally a hot-off-the-presses YouTube drama kind of guy, but when I heard about Logan's little scandal, there was just something about it that I couldn't get out of my head. I mean, famous vlogger slash dude bro ventures into the Japanese suicide forest. He sees a dead man hanging, chooses to film him, and then disseminates that footage to an audience of 15 million tweens. It's just so surreal, it kind of blows my mind thinking about it now. I've seen a lot of reactions to this video. A lot of justified outrage at Paul and a lot of dismay that YouTube would allow such a thing to happen. And honestly, I think that you angry YouTubers are right. Logan Paul should not have done that thing he did, and when people screw up and do immoral things, we have a right to be mad about it. Expressing anger is legitimate and necessary and can make things better. But I think there's another important way to talk about this video, and that's by looking at it and the rest of Logan Paul's vlogography as the piece of art that it necessarily is. Every single day for more than a year, Logan made us a piece of media that was watched and enjoyed by millions of people. And I don't think we can understand what this last video means until we look at that media and ask, how does this function? Why is it the way it is? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take you through some of Logan Paul's work and try to understand it and how it became so darn strange. A quick disclaimer. I'm not the ultimate authority on all things Logan Paul. While I did do remarkably well on this How Well Do You Know Logan Paul quiz, I didn't really know who the guy was before the Suicide Forest scandal. And because there are roughly 10 million Logan vlogs, I didn't have time to watch all of them, or even most of them. So take what I say here with a grain of salt, I guess. I encourage anybody who's interested to watch through Paul's work and make sure that I'm not a fraud. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. I consider this video the real start point of Logan Paul's vlogs. I did put makeup on. Oh god, I'm so freaking Hollywood and I hate it. It's called There's Something in My Bed, and while it's not technically the first video on the channel, it's the first one that takes place in LA, and it's the one that defines Paul's early work. In this video, we get the idea that Logan isn't exactly going for something specific with what he shows us. It's more like he just has a random list of things he wants to say. He slept on the beanbag because he might have bed bugs. Okay. He's gonna go record some stuff with his brother. Alright. He eats a Gaines bowl. He buys a pizza. Confirm best decision of my life. I will never turn down a pizza. Fine. There's no idea he's trying to get across here, no story he wants to tell. More than that, none of the scenes in this are intrinsically interesting at all. And because of that, it seems clear that the vlog isn't supposed to be read as the centerpiece of this guy's life, but as an afterthought. Logan Paul's gonna do some stuff, and if you want to tag along, well, that's your business. This is the structure that all of Logan's videos had in the early days. They're aimless and jumpy and kind of mind-numbing. He constantly returns to the same activities, goes to the gym, goes to set, eats Gaines Bowl after Gaines Bowl after Gaines Bowl. And yeah, this stuff is really boring, but it also feels somehow organic. Like, look at this conversation Logan has with Amanda Cerny. No, I don't know who that is. I don't really want to work out. You gotta do it. I know. That's the, that's what it comes down that's to. That's how it always happens. You just gotta do it. All the time you don't feel like working out, but when you go and you just start, then you're like, oh, okay. It's 15 minutes in. That's all I need. I'm losing my mind, Amanda. I, uh, like this. I mean, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but there is something charming about it. The conversation they have is so mundane and so unnecessary that I can't help but feel a sense of connection to Logan. After all, if this isn't an interaction that Paul would normally have, why would it be in this vlog? It's just too boring to fake. But the vlogs don't stay this way. It's a shame, but we don't get to see Logan eat his 10,000th Gaines Bowl. And that's because, as his videos progress, Logan makes a choice. I don't know if it was conscious or subconscious, but he decides he wants to give us more than a fly-on-the-wall perspective on his repetitive life. He wants to say a thing or get an idea into our heads. 
He wants to cultivate a mission statement. And I think we can get at this shift in thinking and get at Logan's newfound identity by looking at two videos that were made less than a week apart. First, we have A Death in the Family, a video where Logan deals with the loss of his great aunt. Here, for the first time, Logan tries to be emotionally open with his audience. I want to live life with you guys. I want you guys to be able to live life through me and vice versa. So I'm going to be uh, real with you 100% of the time. And that means uh, sometimes it might be sad. Sometimes you might feel things. And in this vlog, Logan establishes a really important aspect of his personality. That he can get earnest and real, but he never takes it too far. He never lets it get in the way of being ostentatious and silly. On one hand, we watch the first few minutes of this video and see that he's all weepy, and we can feel a sense of connection to him. It's sad that his aunt died, and he seems to be genuinely affected by it. But on the other hand, look how he spends the rest of this video. He literally just goofs off with his family and hangs out with children and does silly vlog stuff. So we're gonna do like a epic slow-mo Nerf gun montage. So let's do it! I'm not trying to judge Logan for his reaction to death. I, I get that everybody's different and we all have different ways of coping with loss. But when you watch this video, it's kind of nightmarish. He looks us in the eye and says that he doesn't just want to make us laugh. I I don't think it's my, my job uh, to always make you laugh. And then that's all he does. He can express himself emotionally in his vlogs to some extent, but it just can't overshadow the real point of the vlog to be entertaining and goofy. The other vlog I want to talk about is called I Got My Own Billboard. For me, this video expresses the other essential part of the Logan Paul persona, an emphasis on egoism and status. Here, he finds out there's a billboard with his big ol' face on it, so he goes and stops people and is like, look at that, that's me. Do you know who that is? That's you. It's pretty cringy, honestly, and a few months later, he makes another video like it, but more cringy. Yeah, you see that? What is that? You see that up there? Let's find out what... Oh, it's you. Look how unimpressed this guy is. I, I, I love it. What's important here isn't that Logan has an enormous ego. I imagine that most people in entertainment do. What's important is that he's not ashamed of being into himself. He likes getting attention, he likes feeling larger than life, and he's not gonna hide that. These videos are still pretty early on in Paul's vlogging career, and I'm not trying to say that once they were done, everything about the channel was different overnight. But I think these vlogs speak to something in Logan, and what's more, they speak to how appealing he is to young adolescents. I remember being 12 and 13, it wasn't that long ago, and for me, that period was defined by two very strong emotions. First, I wanted more status. I wanted to be unique, sure, but I wanted that uniqueness to be accepted by a group of people that I was absolutely terrified of, my peers. Second, I wanted to be vulnerable. Broadly speaking, I think that 12 and 13 year old boys are uniquely ill-equipped when it comes to emotionally supporting each other. And of course, that can be very isolating. And it's these two desires that Logan directly addresses. He's not afraid of trying to be popular. When he gets a billboard, he runs up to people, all excited, and shows it to them. He's not afraid of being vulnerable either, but his vulnerability is never so potent as to be threatening. Yeah, he gets sad or intense, but at the end of the day, he can do that and then be fun again. Ultimately, he shows his audience an aspirational vision. He tells them, you can want status, you can express emotion, and that can all be okay. And just writing this, I'm struck by how much I like Logan Paul, at least in theory. The guy's not to my taste, but if his presence on the internet makes a middle schooler feel a little more comfy, who am I to judge? But the thing is, that paradigm shift from making a boring slice of life vlog to expressing certain ideas and a certain identity becomes downright odd in the hands of Logan Paul. To show you how, I'm gonna jump forward, like a year, to the seminal moment in Logan's channel, a video called Reading Your Inappropriate Comments. In a lot of ways, this video is no different from what came before it. Logan films a thing, he hangs out with his friends, he reads some pretty raunchy comments. You know, same ol' same ol'. 
But what makes this vlog special is that here, for the first time, Logan is explicitly selling something. Maverick merch. Do not forget, Logan, you guys can get your own pair of Maverick to pair of socks. Between all his various activities, he says that he'd like us to buy a pair of socks with a picture of his bird on them. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Something, bro. I you got you. I... Pan down right now. Pan down. No! Who <laughs> wants them, yo? Oh! Socks. God damn, they look good. What? Limited edition Maverick socks. Right here, get yours, link it to the description. Why can't I say this word? From this moment on, everything about Logan Paul, the identity that we've seen him construct, becomes inextricably linked to the Maverick clothing line. And it's this, this process by which a person or a character becomes a brand that interests me so much. See, Logan faces a problem here. He has this persona that's deeply resonant among his fans. He no doubt provides his audience a sense of comfort and emotional safety. And now, he has to find some way to turn socks and shorts into an expression of those things. Look at this video. Here, Logan plays a little prank on his little bro. He goes into his closet and replaces all his clothes with Mav socks. <laughs> you devil. What's interesting here is that this is an expression of the same sort of energy that got Logan Paul famous. It's silly and non-threatening, and it sort of reminds you of him getting all excited that he's on a billboard. But at the same time, this is now an ad. It has a call to action, and it surrounds the buying of a thing. Okay, so yeah guys, this is the bonus pack. Look at these special limited edition of socks. Also, these next 1,000 pairs are going to be the ones from Jake's closet. Logan's egoism sort of makes sense in brand form, though. I mean, what's the real difference between a billboard and some socks? No, it's when we come to Paul's serious side that things really start to feel hollow. He's always talking about the Maverick brand really earnestly, as though it comes with a deep message of some sort. The Maverick movement is officially the Maverick revolution. This, this logo means so much. It's about people not being afraid to pursue their passions and follow their dreams regardless of what the naysayers do or think. We aren't drones like 99% of society. We, we act independently. We do our own thing. Suddenly, the safe form of emotional expression that made Logan appealing has to be worked into the nonsense language of Maverick. For Mavericks, right here, this, this symbol right here means so much to me. And it has come to mean so much to you guys as well. Putting a dent in the universe. Really, what revolution is he referring to here? What is the relationship between a hoodie and our denting of the universe? What he's saying feels totally arbitrary, and that's because it is. When you transform yourself into a commodity, it's hard to make a sense of connection or meaning feel genuine. So I think it makes sense that around this time, Logan becomes obsessed with buying stuff and talking about buying stuff. He starts to title his videos after his purchasing life, activating my $10,000 speaker system. I spent $12,000 on two bags of clothes. I bought myself $10,000 custom grills. It might seem like this choice to focus on material possessions is sort of a random one, but I don't think it is. Logan has to convince his audience that when you buy his clothes, you're buying something with weight and purpose. Something that will enable you to be the person you want to be. And so he has to demonstrate how that process works. He needs to buy those grills, he needs to have fun with them and be super cringeworthy with them, because if he didn't do that, well he wouldn't be representing the clothing line. And it's in this way, through this process of identifying with a brand, that Logan starts to feel sort of detached from reality. Logan Paul was always ostentatious and always into himself, but now there's a very real sense that he doesn't know where his status-seeking ends and his emotional side begins. I love art and supporting good artists means a lot to me. Uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna get excited when I see this, because I really love art. Wow, look at my massive body on that wall. I care for my mother and want to find a way to show that. My whole life has been insane, but especially this year, and I haven't really done anything like incredibly super nice for my parents. What am I, a f***ing shot? Let me blindfold her and throw a tiny fraction of my fortune on her face. 
Everything is positioned in the most excessive possible way, even when that feels forced. And that's because Logan has to be in a constant state of reminding us that the ultimate form of expression is the attainment of stuff and the assertion of his identity. And nowhere is this more clear than when Logan goes to other countries. When I watch Paul go to Italy or Dubai or Japan, I'm struck by the extent to which these cultures are totally irrelevant to what he's trying to do. He doesn't experience Italy, he happens to it tries to fly a drone over the Colosseum and gets arrested briefly. He doesn't do much of anything in Dubai besides buying stuff and meeting a sea of people. He doesn't appreciate Japan, he mostly just runs around in his Pokemon outfit and wears this little getup. For Logan Paul, acting this way is a necessary output of the persona he's constructed. When you want to sell a brand and when you want to make your entire media presence surround and reinforce that brand, there can't be an outside to it. To really immerse himself in another culture, he would have to invite the idea into his vlogs that there's a world that isn't defined in terms of Maverick. And he just can't do that. So, to Logan, the world is made of cardboard. He's the only thing that has any definition. Everything else feels like a prop. And so finally, we come back to this Suicide Forest video. And I hope that now we can start to make sense of what happened here. It's really easy to look at this vlog and say, Oh, Logan's a weirdo, and what we have here is just a load of gratuitous, immoral nonsense. But what that idea fails to recognize is that, in some sense, we've been leading up to this video from day one. That it comes out of a million rational choices. Let's start a little vlog. Let's try to cultivate an identity defined by egoism and safe emotional expression. Let's transition that identity into a brand. Let's take that brand across the world. This video is called The Existential Horror of Logan Paul. But for me, that horror isn't just that he filmed and distributed footage of a dead body. It's that, from Paul's perspective, that was a reasonable decision. Of course he's gonna go off the trail in that forest. When he sees the body, there's no reason not to get close to it. And from here, it only makes sense to get a little emotional and then go back to his silly old self. There's no going back. I've seen things I can't unsee. Logan is interacting with something other and scary here. There's a person hanging over there, and seeing something like that is a genuinely surreal experience. But there is no otherness in this video. No sense that what happens here goes past the ego of our protagonist. This is top five craziest things I've ever experienced in my life. This body is not different to Logan Paul. It doesn't threaten him or change the way he approaches his film. No, the body is just like Japan or Italy or anything else. It doesn't really exist. It doesn't have a story. It's just another set piece at this point. Uh, so that's all I had to say about Logan Paul, at least for now. I'd kind of love to make a sequel about the resurrection of his career or whatever. Uh, but wow, that, that, that video is a bit of a doozy, honestly. Uh, I hope that it made sense. I'm recording this at 5am right now, and, and I, I, I hope it makes sense. I, I don't think it makes any sense. Um, but anyway, if it did make sense, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.